Mars, with its thin but still existent atmosphere, provides a unique experience for spacecraft trying to land on it. Parachutes have their limits and are unable to completely slow down anything but a very tiny spacecraft. At the same time, a spacecraft must be aerodynamic to prevent being turned by the thin atmosphere that exists there. And as a result, landing large payloads on Mars can be a particular difficulty. My name is Ben Pierce and I'm the Roadster Tracker. The general method to land on Mars has involved a three-stage process and has been done to some extent with every mission that has landed since the first Viking landers landed. The first stage is to use some kind of a heat shield to initially slow things down and to target approximately the right area. Secondly, parachutes are used to slow down even further down to something more manageable. And finally, The parachutes are ditched and some kind of rockets are used to lower it down to the final surface. The parachutes are ditched because they could end up covering the spacecraft if they're not cut away properly at the end, and they also don't slow down the spacecraft down to a safe enough speed anyways. The same general approach as used by Viking was also used by Phoenix and will be used by the InSight lander. It has its limitations as a sizable portion of the spacecraft must be propellant tanks and it also will knock up dust off of the surface of the planet which could cause interference particularly with rovers. During the 1990s the better faster cheaper model for NASA led them to try new approaches. One of these approaches was the airbag method that was developed or used by the Pathfinder mission and also the two Mars exploration rovers. The primary reason why this method was used was to avoid contaminating the surface of the spacecraft or the surface of the planet with rocket exhaust, which allowed them to do better chemical analysis on the surface of the planet. When the Mars Science Laboratory was being developed, they desired the same kind of properties as the airbag method, but the airbag method had reached its limit and curiosity is much larger than spirit and opportunity, so they were still trying to figure out a way to get something like that worked. What they ended up doing is perhaps the coolest method of deploying a spacecraft, which is known as the Skycrane method, where essentially it operates the same way as previous missions, but the final descent, the rockets are all still 100 feet on the air, and it will drop down the spacecraft down to the surface of the planet, which enables it to land larger and heavier payloads without some of the issues of rockets or airbag methods. The Skycrane method, as you can see in the video, relies on five key phases of landing approach, heat shields, parachutes, rocket slowdown initially, the Skycrane lowering, and the cable being cut. If any one of those fails, the mission would have failed. This would lead to exceedingly complex missions and as a result increases the risk And when we send humans to the surface of Mars, we will initially want to minimize the risk as much as possible until we better understand what those risks are. There have been three proposals to land even heavier payloads than the Curiosity rover on the surface of Mars. The first is a NASA test program known as the Low Density Super Decelerator, the LDSC, and SpaceX has developed two programs, one for the Red Dragon mission and one for the BFR spacecraft. The Low Density Super Decelerator proposes using inflatable heat shields to further slow down the spacecraft, as can be seen in this video of Kerbal Space Program, which uses an example of the technology developed by this test program. They also have a much larger parachute than has ever been demonstrated on the surface of Mars. The system has been tested on Earth, and the inflatable heat shield portion is found to work very well. There have been two tests of this program, and both tests, the inflatable heat shield worked very well, but in the end, the spacecraft was not able to deploy its large parachute safely, and it ended up crashing. This method could still be used to increase the size of payloads on Mars from about 1.5 metric tons that it is currently to about 3 metric tons, which is significantly larger but is still a far cry short of the 6 to 25 metric tons that is required to land humans and to get them back safely. To land even heavier the payloads, SpaceX proposes using just heat shields and rockets, no parachutes. The first proposal to use this was the Red Dragon, which is a modified Dragon spacecraft such as that is used to resupply the International Space Station to land on the surface of Mars. It would use a heat shield configured as a lifting body to slow the spacecraft down to a fractional of the insertion speed and also to orient it into the correct landing spot. 
Then it would use rockets to finally slow it down to the ultimate velocity that is required for it to touch down safely on the red planet. There has never been a test of this done in Martian conditions, but one can presume it is similar to how the Dragon capsules are landed on Earth. Also, every time SpaceX does a recovery of their large boosters, they are testing supersonic retropropulsion, which is the key technology required to make this happen. And as such, SpaceX is probably the best organization in the world to land something large on the surface of Mars. The only truly large system that I have seen with actual blueprints and working hardware is the BFR system proposed by SpaceX. This is the only system that has required 25 metric tons to land a spacecraft on the surface of Mars and be able to launch it back to Earth with humans on board. This video is showing what a proposed trajectory would look like when it is landing. It's not a very high fidelity in terms of the modeling. However, the physics is very high fidelity in this. And you can see that it simply stays inside the atmosphere as long as it can and ultimately turns around and lands on the rocket ends, which will enable it to land large payloads on the surface of Mars. This approach is much, much simpler, does not require as many moving parts, and allows for much less rocket fuel to be used than would be otherwise. Work is still being done to find ways to land heavy landers on the surface of Mars. We are continuing to get better methods, and no doubt there will be future methods that will further improve this technology in the future. This remains perhaps the greatest challenge to landing on Mars. Very few tests have been actually done to really test this technology. But as the interest in landing humans on Mars is increasing, there will be many more tests of this, including some on the surface of Mars, which maybe someday will enable us to send humans to the surface of the Red Planet. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have about this or anything else related to Mars or space exploration in general. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.